so Gravity. Neptune, we're looking at Neptune's orbit, and it's not following Newton's laws. It proposed another planet and we found it. So Neptune's not following all the laws of gravity that from all the other planets in the sun, there must be another planet out there, relevance to the actual universe. So we're out here at Neptune, and so, it's, so I said, maybe there's a planet X. Everybody started looking. And he says, I want to find planet X because something's perturbing Neptune. I will just systematically search everywhere. The Voyage of Voyager, which was traveling in the opposite direction of its twin, the Voyager 1, would have taken you thousands of miles if you had flown from one continent to the other, most likely in an aeroplane. That would have been child's play compared to the Voyage of Voyager. The spacecraft arrived at Neptune 12 years after it launched from Earth. It has been on and will continue to be on a journey around the Sun for thousands of years. The spacecraft returned to Earth with the first images of Neptune's rings, which were then transmitted to the public. Join us as we investigate Elon Musk and NASA's groundbreaking findings of Neptune. Your one-stop destination for all the exciting news and latest information about Tesla, SpaceX, and anything and everything related to this visionary human who has taken over industries and revolutionized the world, Elon Musk. If you're a Musk fan, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you'll be notified. Elon Musk, the world's richest man, is the CEO of SpaceX, yet unlike NASA, he cannot fund pricey research on his own. NASA has gotten access to technology that it could not develop on its own and has made discoveries as a result of its work with Elon Musk, such as the most recent discovery on the planet Neptune. Do you think we'll be able to go a specific distance in our lifetime? Some explorers have made it their life's work to go across the world. Their mileage may be in the hundreds, maybe even thousands of miles, but it pales in contrast to the Voyager 2 probe's journey across space. The Voyager 1 space probe traveled in the opposite direction as Voyager 2. Voyager 2 took 12 years to reach the planet Neptune. The Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft were designed to take advantage of a once-in-a-lifetime planetary alignment in order to get a close look at our solar system. The Voyager 2 set its sights on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Certain space-related concepts were debunked by what this space mission discovered on Neptune. We have to admit that the first images of Neptune delivered by Voyager 2 were breathtaking. All of that blue is stunning. The planet's rings could be seen in early images, but there was also a large, furious storm. NASA scientists were taken aback by the photographs of the storm transmitted by Voyager 2. The storm, which appears to be a counterclockwise wind with speeds of up to 1,500 miles per hour, was detected in the planet's southern hemisphere. This was the strongest wind ever measured. It's known as the Great Dark Spot by astronomers. The spot vanished five years later when the Hubble Space Telescope gazed at the planet, indicating that the storm had passed. As a result, many questions arose, with people wondering why the planet was suffering such strong winds. Strong winds were not the only source of concern for NASA scientists. Its temperature, too, appeared to be a mystery. Despite its greater distance from the Sun, Voyager 2 found Neptune to be warmer than Uranus during its visit. The space mentality was that the further away you were from the Sun, the less heat you received. The increased temperature of Neptune calls this premise into question. The question is, where does Neptune's heat come from? According to physicist Brian Cox, who spoke about it on a BBC broadcast, the origin of Neptune's extra heat is unknown. The biggest question was whether the two frequent features, high temperatures and strong winds, were linked in any way. Many scientists assume that resolving one mystery will lead to the resolution of another. It's not a simple process to achieve this. How to determine temperature on Neptune is still a mystery. The Voyager 2 spacecraft measured the temperature of the outermost layer. At this moment, the temperature is not much higher than Uranus. Neptune, however, should not have a temperature equivalent to Uranus because it receives less solar irradiation. This means that Neptune is hotter than Uranus in terms of temperature. This does not make Neptune unusual. Uranus, on the other hand, is an outlier. For example, Jupiter and Saturn emit more heat than they receive from the Sun. Jupiter is the hottest gas giant, followed by Saturn and Neptune, with Uranus appearing to be out of place. Neptune generates enough heat to keep itself warm, but Uranus draws all of its energy from the Sun. Internal heat comes from the heat left over from the creation of the solar system when these planets were created. Kelvin Helmholtz contraction occurs when the heat in the initial solar nebula compresses. The additional heat source on Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn is due to gravitational contraction. 
When the Earth gravitationally compresses, the material sinking inside converts potential energy into thermal energy, which is discharged upwards out of the globe. Since Uranus lacks this type of heat source, something must have transpired to it. Heat is expelled in burps rather than a constant stream, according to one theory. We may be seeing Uranus in a quiescent phase while Neptune has recently burped, according to Joshua Tullifson of the University of California, Berkeley. Convection causes burps, which can happen in random bouts separated by a considerable period of time. Until one of these convection events occurs, we won't know if it works this way. It could be because Uranus is older than Neptune, according to Amy Simon, a NASA senior scientist for planetary atmosphere research at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. She claims that the quantity of heat emitted by a planet is mostly controlled by its age and the rate at which it releases it. A single Voyager 2 flyby will not be enough to answer or record all of Neptune's mysteries, according to NASA scientists. Arcanum's spaceship has been proposed by the conceptual exploration research Connex team of scientists. The Arcanum is a planned L-class spacecraft that will exhibit groundbreaking innovations that could be used in future space missions. It will be four times the size of the current largest deep space probe, weighing more than 21 metric tons. Arcanum will be made up of several parts, including an orbiter to study Neptune, a lander to investigate, and a penetrator to strike Triton and conduct a seismic experiment to better understand its geology and structure. A telescope for investigating the solar system's outermost reaches could be included in the project, which could aid in the discovery of planets orbiting other stars. The Arcanum's problem is that there isn't a rocket that can launch it. When scientists are confronted with issues like these, they attempt to devise a solution. The James Webb Space Telescope was folded up and unfolded once it reached space when NASA launched it. The method, however, was delicate, pricey, and posed a danger of errors. This is where Elon Musk comes into play. Although the Starship project and its human spaceflight capabilities have already received a lot of attention, the rocket has the ability to change our perceptions of our planet and its moons. Starship will totally alter how we think about solar system exploration, according to Ali Bramson, a physicist at Purdue University. Planetary science is on the verge of exploding. Expeditions to Neptune and its largest moon in the outer solar system are already being considered by scientists. They want to return enormous volumes of samples from our moon and Mars, as well as develop strategies to protect the world against asteroids. The Starship is currently being built at Starbase in Texas. It comprises of a big spacecraft and a massive rocket known as the Super Heavy. Both components can safely land on Earth and be reused, reducing the cost of space travel dramatically. The Starship, according to SpaceX, might cost as little as $2 million to launch. As the cost of spaceflight decreases, more funds may be directed to developing the actual equipment needed for scientific research and exploration. At a low cost, the Starship can transport 100 metric tons of cargo and passengers into space. The Starship has a thousand cubic meters of usable space. When the Starship is deconstructed, the Eiffel Tower may be placed in the cargo compartment. This concept has piqued the interest of scientists. Massive machinery and equipment can be transported into space for conducting experiments and extracting minerals. The Starship will allow scientists to travel to various parts of the solar system. Connex recommends transporting the Arcanum to Neptune via the Starship. SpaceX might launch as many as a dozen test missions in 2022, with cargo voyages starting in 2023, according to Elon Musk. The Starship's ability to return to Earth is critical to science. The payload room of the spacecraft permits it to return vast amounts of material, which could assist our comprehension of the cosmic riddles. Once Starship is operational, the advancement of space technology will be hastened. Many more people will be able to fly since they will not have to go through the costly process of building rockets. Traveling to space could become as straightforward as boarding Starship like a plane. Alright everyone, that brings us to the end of our video. If you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want more updates about Elon Musk and his endeavors, then don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated.